All right, my friends, welcome back to Live from the Mansion at Strathmore, where we mix them together live music and insightful conversation. I'm your host, Chris Styles Bacon, and I'm gonna help you get to know some of these artists. This week, my friends, we have an amazing trio, the EJB Trio, which consists of Elijah Jamal Balbed, Isabel De Leon, and Mark G. Meadows. My friends, get your palm emojis ready. Start inviting your friends right now to look at this video and enjoy the EJB Trio.
walk a mile and wear shoes. What would you do if you was me? Nobody to turn. Look around, you see what I see. Think of what you do. Nobody believed in you. What would you do? They were dealt the wrong hand And everyone knows The path was pain That they never chose It's all up to us We can right this wrong Walk a mile in their shoes What would you do if you was me? Nobody to turn to. Oh. Think of what you Kick off your penny loafers.
and take a walk in somebody's shoes that think it's over. Like if you're homeless, bare feet on the concrete. Can't stop and smell the roses, cause all you smell's defeat. I got kinda punny, it's nothing funny, cause it ain't sweet. When where you eat, drink, and sleep resides in the street. When violence is your inner means to gain peace. And popping on your enemies is how it be. All right, my friends, we're here with many classes of artists in residence here, okay? And so we here, we got Elijah Jamal Balbet over here. We got Isabel DeLeon over here. We got Mark G. Meadows over here, all right? All three amazing musicians and composers in their own right, all together forming a Voltron for the EJB trio, okay? <laughs> so uh, let, let's start off like this. I was telling my other friends, the only people I've been seeing is y'all, and the clerk said Trader Joe's. That's it, man. You know what I'm saying? That in the house. So how has the past three or uh, uh, four months been for you? You know what I'm saying? As a musician and an artist. It's definitely been an adjustment. Um, I think all of us experience the disappointment of having, you know, canceled tours, canceled gigs. Um, yeah. But in the same token, you know, it's forced us to be a little more creative at home. So figuring out ways to still reach our audience through live streaming performances but also giving us more time to hone other musical skills. Like for me, spending more time producing music, recording, and uh, practicing. Yes, right? Practice regimen. I, and so, um, so all of y'all, all of y'all have like unique, unique um, voices in composition and places that you all are coming from. So how do y'all approach composition? What inspires you all as composers? Um, what inspires me as a composer is the most authentic and real moment that I can have where I can right away depict everything that I'm feeling, everything I'm thinking. So the more I think about it, the less likely it is, is it's gonna be something I'm proud of. When I compose, it's that I feel it, I record it, I write it, and then I perfect it. But having that quick release is really important for me. Wow. Wow, very yeah. It's like it's like um it's like a very hip hop like approach, brother. You know what I'm saying? You just you you go in there and you make it happen. You know what I'm saying?
like like a piece that y'all was playing out earlier and then you went into like this this double time and i was like oh that's such like a, a rock move right there <laughs> and it's like all these experiences just come in you know it definitely creates like a potpourri i my bro well, I think you guys both use the key word, which is inspiration. Mm -hmm. But inspiration, you can't create it. You know, you mm -hmm. have to be, you have to be moved by something. And so, mostly when I compose, it's usually because I'm either happy or sad or mad about something. Um, but more recently, especially in the last three years, uh, no coincidence. But uh, I've been writing music relating to the social events that happen today um, about race, about the nature. Uh, the environment rather um, sure. all the different things all the different struggles that we're going through typically similar to mark i'll like read an article or watch a video and be so moved by something that i go straight to the piano or to the basin and, and write something wow amazing amazing and it's so great to see you also on bass as well as saxophone this guy's killing the bass too man so my friends what what do you think is the is the is the positive thing that's coming out of this situation for you all as musicians and artists. So you touched on like finding this new way to, um, to, to bring, to bring your music across using like the internet, you know what I'm saying? And so what about yourselves? In the same, like covering all the things that we maybe had been talking about trying to do, to do for the longest time, like all of our weaknesses or all of these things like production, practicing, a lot of practicing. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I think the deeper thing is that I and I hope that people will appreciate live music more and appreciate yeah. musicianship more after all this. And I've already noticed it as we start to get into performing just a tad bit, little by little. Yeah. Um, you're saying there might be four people watching you play and they're just mesmerized by it and they love it because this thing has been taken away from them. So I hope that that's that trend continues to happen. Yeah, for sure. I'm with you. I think that uh collaboration has just just magnified ever since this pandemic has hit i mean we've all collaborated literally already since this and not that we you know obviously we haven't seen each other but being at home and not having the excuse of man i got all these shows i gotta prep for or i got you know i gotta prep for this blues show at strathmore or whatever <laughs> you have a reason and you you don't have the the hang-ups that prevented you in the past from having to schedule the studio time having to go trek to your house before your rehearsal it's just like i'm gonna record something and then send it back to you you let me know what you think you send it back to me and you do that over and over and over again until it's what you want it to be um so there's like no excuses anymore it's like you want to collab let's collab and 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 look not only domestically internationally too mm -hmm. this is being done yeah so no no excuses for us to create yeah. and also to to build with our with our friends with our with our families like you know what i'm saying like the the chat that everyone's keeping like on um via text message and stuff mm -hmm. you yeah. know what I'm saying? i feel like the community is growing stronger even though we are separate right now in this time yeah we're, we're, we're resilient people <laughs> i know that's right man yeah. look so i'm glad that y'all here i'm glad that y'all create music i'm glad that y'all keeping it safe i'm glad that strathmore has provided a safe space space for us all to do this thing that we're doing here Definitely. and i hope y'all enjoying everything my friends that's right <laughs>
That was Live from the Mansion with Elijah Jamal Balban, Isabel DeLeon, and Mark G. Meadows. We're here every Wednesday night at 7.30 p.m. with our host, Chris Tells Bacon, and a new artist. Join us next week for Josiane Francis and Chow Tian. RSVP at Strathmore.org or on Facebook. <laughs>